I thought you were going to get Allie with them too. Good morning. Uh, taking Phoenix to school. Today is a rainy day. Today is, uh, Phoenix has uh, conferences today and tomorrow and Friday, so he has less school today than what he usually has. And I've got some leads to follow up on, and that's about it. Just wanted to bring you guys up to what's going on right now. <laughs> Alright guys, after the intro, say goodbye. Bye! Wow. Again, this is always freaky when you have big, like, multi-tonnage pieces of metal flying over your head. Yeah, no worries, no worries. We are headed out to Tacoma Dodge, not to get a part for a, a, a car, a, a customer's car, but to get a part for the bus. Since it only came with one key, I have had a separate key and key fob as one assembly on order from Dodge for the last month and a half? Yeah, it's been a long time. Very long time, so I'm going to get it. It finally arrived. It is more expensive than any key that I've ever seen in my whole entire lifetime. Uh, and that's not the end of it. Once I get the key, it has to be cut. There's a fee for that. The dealership does not cut the key. They don't have any access to laser cutting. And I'm like, what, really? You're the dealer. It never ceases to amaze me. Anyway, I have to go to a separate company to get the key cut. And then I also have to have the key programmed uh, because unfortunately I don't have any way to program keys. That's why I don't do any locksmithing or anything like that because that's a whole set of more money in tools and electronics and stuff. Um, so yeah, this key is going to be probably about a $500 key when it's all said and done. One thing that I don't like about this key, and it has happened to the only one that I have, this is a brand new one. I'm not sure if you guys can see this or not, but see that plastic right there, that plastic that the metal is around? This right here breaks. It cracks and it breaks and then it's a major pain. I would have thought that maybe they would have superseded the key with um, with metal on there, but no, no, that, that, that would be, no, they're not gonna do that. This place uh, is called Guardian Security. They cannot program the key, only the dealership can program it. And um, they can cut the key though. Laser cut, $50, so now, um, I'll be about $250 into the key, and that doesn't include the uh, the cutting, or excuse me, the uh, the programming that the dealership is gonna charge about 200 bucks for, so. Man. Well, here's something that we got today. The uh, fuse, and I was right, 120 amp. So we got the, uh, the fuse, so that's something else that will get installed, and uh, yeah. I'm ready to go out there and do it. I have a uh, court video conference to uh, attend right now, but after we get done with that, we are gonna head out there and we are going to uh, do more electrical. Further progress. We are back to it. So I'll show you guys this. Um, first of all, here's the fuse. So here's my fuse. This is the next terminal end that I'm gonna make for the cable. So you guys know that this is one continuous cable. This section right here attaches to the battery that's back there. The other side is going to attach to the solenoid, which is this right here. So battery cable goes from the uh, vehicle's battery to the fuse, from the fuse to the uh, solenoid. From the other side of the solenoid is where this will attach. However, I can make this terminal on this side, or excuse me, I can make a new terminal on this side that will fit here, and I will just figure out the length that I need from here to the battery, and then I'll cut that and make another terminal here. Does that make sense? Now, even if it doesn't, it's okay. It's okay. I'm doing this. You guys aren't, so <laughs> it's all in my head. Uh, so here we go. Uh, heat shrink tubing is on here, moved down so that it doesn't get too hot and attach itself because this wire is going to get quite hot when I'm uh, when I do this. 
I've already stripped it. This right here is enough to account for the terminal going on there. So the terminal will go on there and then I will crimp it and then I will heat it up with the uh, torch right there and then stick solder in there, solder it, let it cool, wire wheel it to get it nice and copper looking again. And then we will take and we will put the uh, heat shrink tubing on it and then we use the heat gun to shrink that tubing. Heat shrink tubing on, wire stripped. Terminal on, these aren't exactly the right crimpers so I'm not gonna put a huge crimp in this, just enough to hold it in place. So, all right, solder flows down. So we are going to put a slight angle on this, like this. The wire is nice and stiff, so it kind of retains its shape. And then this goes on, that goes on. Start to heat this up. Heat it until it gets nice and hot, and then we'll start to feed the solder into the copper. more solder we're good to go this turns off put it someplace so it doesn't fall over let this uh, cool for just a little bit wire wheel it to make it look all nice and coppery and beautiful again straighten the wire back out pull your heat shrink tubing up to the wire bam like that connect your power inverter to power and Plug it into your heat gun and turn it on. Turn your heat gun on. Now, this right here is marine grade heat shrink tubing, which means that it needs to stay on long enough or get hot enough that the sealant starts to ooze out. You want, you want your sealant to ooze. There. Just like that. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's shiny right there at the where the black meets the red. Probably can't see it, but it's shiny there. So this terminal right here, this is done. And this will go right like that. This is so that you can get a better idea of like where the battery's at. There's a steering wheel. Gear shift knob, stereo, straight down on the floor. Brake pedal, gas pedal, AKA accelerator. And then here is the battery. So we've got the positive stuff over here. That right there is the uh, case top to the fuse. And I have drilled through the side of the case and I have put the screws in. They are not tight yet. There's nothing on the back side. I'm gonna bring you guys down there so you can see it. I'm gonna grab some uh, nuts and washers. And we'll venture down underneath the bus once again. And you can already see nice silver screws there. So what we're going to do is we are going to uh, put washers on those and then nuts on them. And then somehow extend our arms all the way up there to hold stuff while we tighten it down here. Don't know if it's going to work. I want to try. I was barely able to manage to get on the washer and the nut. I drilled the hole slightly, very, very slightly smaller so that I could actually push the bolt through and the bolt is not loose. So I was able to apply just a little bit of pressure to get those nuts started without having the, uh, the bolt like push through and fall out on the inside there. So now uh, I will get my ratchet and see if I can tighten these without having to be up top at the same time. Positive wire is now attached to the bottom of the fuse that is currently live right now because I've got it connected over here. I have piggybacked it in front of the major fuse for the vehicle simply because I don't want something to happen to this circuit and have it take out this fuse because then the whole vehicle I won't be able to drive. So, all right, so that is that. Everything fits on there nicely like it should. I did not crack that, that was already like that. So now I just need to install my relay. 
We have had dinner. Phoenix helped me. It was awesome because I can't be in two places at the same time. So Phoenix has been holding, I don't know where it's at, but he's been holding the wrench so that I can tighten these because I can't be up here and down there at the same time. Oh, hey, <laughs> come on in, bud. So Phoenix helped me get that relay tightened up and uh, that was a lot of help because I, like I said, I can't have my hands in two places at the same time when one's inside the vehicle and one's outside. Oh, hey. And Phoenix is excited because there's a ring around the moon, which you guys probably can't see. It's a moon ring. Do you see the moon ring? Do you wow, see the moon? Really big. Oh, thank you. That's what she said. <laughs> oh, she said. <laughs> what? Uh, I know you guys can't see it. I don't know what's wrong with the camera. I think there's something wrong with the camera. I've got settings because I thought that the night stuff used to look a lot better. It did. What'd you do to the camera? I don't know. I did what something to the camera. All right, let's go play a game. Do you want to play a game? This is a game that Angie and Phoenix got at. Would you rather be a man? That's not a man. Um, That's a short. Goodwill. Stop oh. licking the box. Yeah, it's not. It could be. It could it's be a man. <laughs> what are you doing? What do we do? Okay. You're gonna have all these tiles that move. These actually move. No. Oh. These ones move. Oh. Okay. Okay. So your little dude will go into his corner spot. So you're green, right? Yeah, I'm green. Okay. I guess I'm a woman. I'm an old hag, so I'm going there. Well, here, you're, you're an old. You're a, give yourself more credit. You're a sorceress. And and I'm, I'm, seriously, I'm a, look at me. And I'm an <laughs> old hag's husband. Wow. What are you doing with my wife? <laughs> no, not like. <my, laughs> so these are all set up. Uh, on your turn, you're gonna. F or actually, no, we divvy out all these cards, don't we? So you're gonna have a pile of cards in front of you. Okay. And you're gonna lift your first card, and you're not gonna show it to anybody, but you're gonna lift it and look at it. So this is what it is. It's this little genie in a bottle guy. Okay. And you're gonna find where that is on here. So it's right here yep. right now. So you would like follow the pathways. So for this one, this would work for you. If it was your turn and you flip that over, mm -hmm. you could go do 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 to it okay. because. Yep, the pathway. path works. And then this, you would flip over because you're done that one now and it's a point. Okay. So if you go to start your turn and let's say, let's say there is no... No path. No path. So it's like that. Okay. And you're sitting here and you're like, oh, I have to get up there to that one. Mm -hmm. And it's like not accessible. There's this piece that you can take and wherever these are, mm -hmm. you can push it. So you can be like... Oh, okay. So that doesn't help you, but so let's go again. So it would be like, whoop. So now you can move. So you'd be like, I'm to here, but I still, whoops. I Press still need to get to that one. So that's right. your turn and you're over. Um, so what do I do with that card now? It stays on your pile until you can complete it. Okay. And then it gets, then it gets flipped up when it's complete. When it's complete, it gets flipped up. So okay. then the next turn that you have, you'd still try to get to this. So you'd. So if this is here now, so you push it and it goes to here, mm -hmm. the rule is, is this cannot be pushed back this way now. It has oh. to be moved to a new location. Okay. Like it would have to go. So you can't go like one way and then the next person moves and pushes it back. Okay. So now it's over here. So if, if he... So now that it's over there though, can I put it back over there and move it back this way? If it's a different piece, so I Yeah, guess... you, you can pick it up and you can take it anywhere. Okay. Oh, another thing. So yeah, he, he could. Me. So so this is this right now. If I went this way, I could fall out of the world. And like, if there was a say, there was a brick wall here, I could not go there because like you can't walk there. But if I fell out, just of the like Pac-Man and the ghosts. Yeah, so you yeah. Can come across. Okay. And you could like come on across the same grid lines and then like go this well, that's way. That's pretty much all there is to it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's play. Okay. Hello, my name is Poopy. And you have been watching Beyond 1031. Please like, comment, and subscribe.